Hi scholars, happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are having a great start to another Spirit Week. How exciting. I saw so many fun pictures of scholars dressed up as teachers yesterday and I just can't wait to continue to see what scholars are dressing up as the rest of the week for all of those Spirit Days. So, we have been reading nonfiction texts and we have read those about brown bears, about frogs, about apples, and now I am so excited because we are reading a story about how animals adapt. So this story is going to be about how animals change so that they can live best in the environment that they're currently in. So adapt is another kind of way to say change. So we're seeing what these what skills these animals need to learn so that they can best survive where they are. I am so excited to get started. Here is the cover. All right, let's dive in. We see it's a nonfiction text because we have that table of contents that we talked about early on. Most nonfiction texts have these so that you can learn about the different topics within the book. So today we are just going to read the first title page that we have, Why Do Animals Adapt? So it tells me that we start on page four. Remember scholars, a nonfiction text teaches us facts or real events. And an informational text like this one tells us information about a subject. All right, so we're turning to page four. Remember, because that's where the table of contents told us where we find why do animals adapt. Here we go. We have the title, Why Do Animals Adapt? The homes of animals are always changing. Some changes happen in nature and others are caused by people. When an animal's habitat or living area is no longer the same, that animal must adapt or change to suit its new habitat. So we see some animals here in their habitats. We have captions for the photographs. Remember, nonfiction texts mostly have photographs unless the author chose to draw pictures of the something real, but because it's about real things and not sort of made up things like talking mice in Chrysanthemum or the other books that we read. Okay, so now we have another bold text that's telling us a little bit about this next section that we're going to read. So that says, what is adaption? Hmm, what do you think adaption is? Let's read to find out. Adaption occurs in the body of an animal or in the way it behaves. Some adaptations happen quickly and others take place over millions of years. The way an animal looks or acts today might be very different from the way it looked or behaved long ago. Now, this, uh, this next paragraph tells us adapting to different conditions. Animals adapt to stay alive. They must adapt to find food, escape danger, defend themselves and their young, or adjust their bodies to hot or cold temperatures. Some animals must adapt to losing their habitat and living closer to people. Animal species or types that cannot adapt to changes in their habitat 
become extinct. An extinct species is one that no longer exists. I see that extinct is a bold word. So it's a word that's in bold text. Scholars, what does extinct mean? Raise a silent hand. What does extinct mean? All right, so pretend I just called on you. I want you to tell me, what does extinct mean? If you said extinct, extinct means it no longer exists, you got it. Good job. All right, let's keep reading to learn more about why animals adapt. Ooh, now we have some examples of animals who had to adapt to their circumstances. Let's read about those. The crocodile is an animal that has remained unchanged for millions of years. Its body is well adapted to its river habitat. Ooh, so here we see a crocodile and we just learned it hasn't changed for millions of years. So they haven't had to go through those adaptions that some other species or animal types have. Ooh, so now here we have a mountain goat. The caption to this photograph says, a mountain goat's foot has a hard covering called a Huff. Ooh, touch your nose if you've heard of the word huff before. Looking for all those scholars touching their noses. Oh, me too. A huff, the ones that I've heard about before are often on horses or goats like this one. So it says each huff is split and has a rubbery bottom to give the goat a secure grip on uneven, rocky ground. So now think to yourself, why would a goat need to be able to have a good grip on uneven, rocky ground? A mountain goat is what we're talking about. So think about that. I think that a mountain goat probably has to have that good grip because they're going up and down those mountains and that's where they live. So they have to make sure that they can survive in that environment. Oh, and now we have this one with the little girl. Oh, she looks like she's having so much fun with that pony. Many animals such as horses, dogs, and cats are domesticated. These animals depend on people for food and shelter. Some domesticated animals, such as cattle, have adapted so well to human care that they can no longer survive in the wild. Ooh, interesting. All right, scholars, when I read these pages, I read getting information about how these animals adapt. Ooh, I got a lot of information in just reading this. So, we found out the answer to what an ad adaptation is. It's a change in this part of the text. So now, I want to know an adaptation in one of these things that we just read about. Ooh. Think of something that you learned that the animal had to change so that they could survive in their natural and their new habitat. Mm. So I know one animal that didn't have to have an adaption was a crocodile because we read that crocodile, crocodiles have been unchanged for millions of years. 
it has already been well adapted to its river habitat. But we talked about two other different animals. And what adaptations did we learn about those animals? Oh, maybe try to do a turn and talk with someone at home or someone who's helping you out with that video. And you guys can talk about what changes or adaptations you learned on this page. An adaptation that I learned was about the hoof of a mountain goat. And like we talked about before, it needs that grip on its hoof because when it's living in the mountains, it's gonna have to go all around the uneven, rocky ground. And we wanna make sure that it doesn't slip and fall because then they couldn't even live in their own environment. All right, scholars, so remember, an adaptation is a change in an animal's body or a change in an animal's behavior. So we're going to be learning more about adaptations in the next couple of days, and I can't wait to find out some more about these super cool creatures that we've been talking about. So I will see you on Wednesday. Bye.